police search for the attacker's in a St. Peter killing turned to security outside of the District A Magistrates Court and a 15-year-old has been arrested in connection with the shooting in the city. A 12-hour hunt for 24-year-old Aaron Boyce, who was attacked while parked out near a cemetery in St. Peter last evening, ended in a mother's worst nightmare and a police search for at least two murder suspects. The body of the Wells Road Pycornus St. Lucy youth was discovered around 10 today in Pleasant Hall, St. Peter area. A 24-year-old man is now dead after being stabbed by another in the wee hours of the morning. He was at the Oysters Bay Gardens around 12.30 when he got in an altercation and was stabbed under his left breast. The young man ran into the Oysters police station where he collapsed and died. A Christchurch youth was shot reportedly by a drive-by shooting in Colomero, died yesterday at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Sources told the Daily Nation that Romario Yard of Bayville was riding a bicycle when a car pulled alongside him and someone opened fire. He was shot in the chest. Police are seeking the public's assistance in locating a man believed to be armed and dangerous. He's Kamal Mali Yard, 24. Yard is urged to turn himself into police accompanied by an attorney at law or a family member. Security was tighter than usual outside the District A Magistrates Court today as murder accused or Andre Omar Lord Evo Jackman and three co-accusers appeared before acting magistrate Alistair Seal. Jackman was charged back in May for the shooting death of Charlie Dunn on April 25, 2014 while at a bar at the corner of Nelson Street and Wellington Street, the city. Police need help getting to the bottom of a fatal shooting of 25-year-old Shamari Nicholas over the weekend. Nicholas of Haynesville House in area St. James was, was shot multiple times and his body was found in Hawkins Gap, St. Michael, last Saturday. The young man who was shot in Bridge Street the city this afternoon has been identified as 18-year-old Rashawn Alexander of St. David's Christ Church. The incident occurred after a quarter, a quarter after four. Alexander was taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital where he's said to be in critical condition. A 15-year-old boy is now one of two people arrested in connection with Friday's shooting on Bridge Street, the city. The St. Michael youth's identi identity has not been revealed. He has been charged with serious bodily harm, using a firearm without a license and violent disorder. Also, 20-year-old Gary Ian Williams of Stewart's Lodge Carrington Village St. Michael was also charged with violent disorder. Police have arrested and formally charged Ronaldo Carter with the death of his cousin Jason Carter on New Year's Day. Ronaldo and Jason, both 31 years old, were in a dispute on the morning of January 1st, 2015, where Jason was shot in his face. Leon Garfield Lawrence, 25, of Block 10 D Bonnet's house near St. Michael, was remanded to prison. He would appear in the court today charged with causing serious bodily harm to Marlon Brathwaite with intent to maim, disfigure, and disable him. 22-year-old Lemar Carter's body was discovered close to the mangrove landfill in Vaux, Clue, St. Thomas in the wee hours of this morning with several gunshot wounds and other bruises after police patrol intercepted a silver-gray Mitsubishi Lancer around 1.20 this morning. Up to the end of 2014, we would have had some 17 young men all under the age of 35 being murdered in this country. These young men were not murdered by women. They were murdered by other young men like yourselves. So although the topic is going to be a pretty heavy one, I will expect it to be interactive, where we will share with each other and at the end of it all, both parties would have learned something from the experience here this morning. Men as perpetrators and victims of crime. Now, I'm going to start by looking very quickly at some definitions so that we will be on the same page as we go through our presentation. A victim someone that a crime is committed against some kind of injustice, the person who is injured. If you're speaking of bullying, you speak of the bully, you speak of the victim. So the victim is the person who is injured. The perpetrator, a person who commits or is guilty of something wrong, such as a crime. 
he was the perpetrator of the crime. He's the person who committed the crime. And when we speak of homicide, we speak of a murder. All right? So those are the, the three definitions that I really want to put out there in the early as we move along. Let's start firstly by looking at men as perpetrators of crime, men who commit these crimes. And I want to start by looking at a survey, uh, well, the study by the National Task Force on Crime Prevention in the year 2010. It says that males were increasingly more likely to be murdered than females. What is that saying to us? That we are losing our young men. We are hearing daily about men in crisis, boys in crisis, boys not doing as well as girls and so on. But how, we, how do we expect to get any better results when we are losing our young men to murder? Males were also increasingly more likely than females to be perpetrators in a homicide. What does that mean? That our young males are killing our young males. We're bound to be in crisis. If we are destroying each other, then we have to be in crisis. Most homicides involve persons who knew each other, and that is a given. Persons who were once friends. In the city, I think in 2013, a young man from a secondary school killed another young man around a gambling table for 25 cents. They were friends. So it's almost unlikely that you will have murders from persons that don't know each other. It happens with the one off thing. Again, in St. Lawrence Gap, the young man that was stabbed outside the nightclub because he stepped on another, young, on another young man's foot. Young persons between the, between the ages of 20 and 39 we're more likely to be both victims and perpetrators of homicides. One in four murders resulted from a one-off dispute. What is that saying to me as well? That we need to teach our young people, we need to teach our young males conflict resolution. Because it is saying that anytime we get into a quarrel with each other, we are going to respond only by fighting. And we are seeing it a lot now on the internet, on Facebook, fights at this school, at that school, at the next school, and at the third school. Because our young people seemingly don't know any other way of resolving conflicts unless it results in a fight. That speaks of a society, not only males now. That speaks of a society that is in crisis. Overall, disputes were the most common circumstances leading to murder. Again, we can't talk out things. We can't walk away. Because uh, if we walk away, and forgive me, uh, the person from the National Task Force know that I keep it very real, and I don't intend to change it here today. So that if you walk away from a fight, you're going to be seen as a fussy. And you don't want that reputation. You don't want a boy to think that you're soft. You want to be considered a girl's man, but not a girl. So that you're going to do what you think it takes for you to, to build and to develop and to maintain a reputation. Statistics of males arrested. This statistic from the Royal Barbados Police Force. And I'm not really interested in all of them. I want to look at this section juvenile males, a juvenile, anyone on the age of 16 years old. 2772 total men, males arrested in 2010, out of that 85 persons under 16 years old. Let's jump. 2013, 2773, one above 2010, 130. 32 males, 132 males under the age of 16 arrested. 
I really wanted to get an idea of arrested for what, but unfortunately, that data was not available. But whatever the case, we cannot be losing 132 young men under the age of 16 to crime. Is that what we want for our society? Within that 132 could have been my brother, your cousin, your family member, your closest friend, your next door neighbor. We need to take stock, gentlemen. We need to take stock of our lives. And I'm happy to see the faces here today. I'm happy to see people wearing prefect badges and so on. I would have been a bit more impressed, gentlemen, if I had seen the ones that we really need to get to. Usually when we have these seminars, the ones that you really need to reach are the ones who remain at school. I think it is because sometimes the schools, are, and, and I'm not crying on any school, but I think sometimes the, the school wants to maintain a certain reputation so they can send the best. Because they don't want to send somebody that's going to embarrass the school. That's a side thing. Commonly committed crimes. Can anybody give me an idea of what you think these commonly committed crimes are? What do you think these, yes sir? Death, theft, okay, theft. Anybody else want, want to help him out? What do you think, yes sir? Murder, murder, uh, yes sir, shooting. So we have marijuana, we have shooting, we have theft, and we have, you forget what you say too? Murders. Anybody want to go at it? What are the most commonly committed crimes amongst males? Rape. rape. Hmm. And he said it, rape. Fantastic. So rape has been added to the list. Let's see how much of you are correct. Yeah, sorry, you guys, go ahead, sir. Vandalizing. I went to school long, reg long, but not regular. My favorite subject was lunch. So you're going to explain to me <laughs> what vandalizing means because I, I've never heard the word in my life. What is vandalizing? Mashing up people's property. Yes, sir? Obstruction. Obstruction. He's going even deeper. You watch a lot of CSI? <laughs> okay. Yes? Assault. Assault. Assaulting what? Uh, Different people, I guess. You're a thinker. I like a thinker. What school are you from? Uh, I like a thinker. You are think you are all thinking, and you are right, huh? Vandalizing, destroying people's property, so that you get vexed at school one day and nobody, the door ain't do you nothing. You can't hit back or you shouldn't hit back your teacher. So you go to the classroom and you tell the people door blam, door mash up. You know what? You don't intend to buy back. You get on the people transport board buses and you take your compass or some sharp edge object, and because they look too nice. And we believe that we must not sit and enjoy things nice. You take the sharp edged ob sharp edged object and you and you leave your stain, vandalizing. And I looked up that word this morning. I didn't know what it meant, but I felt somebody would have come with it. So I looked it up this morning. All right. You're right. Drug related offenses. Firearms. Violent crimes, manslaughter, murder. And some of you may ask the question, what is the difference between the two? When you hear of murder, you hear of an intentional act. It meant that I set out to kill you. I made it in my mind that you must be dead, and I set out to kill you. The manslaughter was not an intentional act. For example, I'm, I'm driving recklessly, and I get in an accident and the person that I hit dies, it was not the, my intention to kill you, but you guys with me? Good. So, so you, you have your rape and then you have your other crimes. A lot of our young people, sir, will you agree with me, are involved in drugs? They're taking and using of drugs? Yeah? yeah? Are you one of those young men, sir? 
Not that you would have told me, yes. What about guns, sir? You go to a fantastic school. You have an excellent principal doing a fantastic job up there. You know, they got a lot of guns and things about the place used by young people. No? <laughs> what about this, the 15 year old guy that recently opened fire in Bridgetown and shot a, an 18 year old in his back? Was he shot with a toy gun? Hmm? No? Do you know you have some friends that after lunch they go back to the, the classroom and they, they start getting all like, are you one of them? Oh, he, he didn't get an also before lunch. You, any, you got any idea where you get an also? Hmm? Yeah. Somebody said <laughs> drugs? <laughs> Stupid juice, you call it? <laughs> See, you learn something every day. I never even knew that it's called stupid juice. So if the juice is so stupid, why do you think young people are using it? Because it's wrong? That's a fantastic answer. And anything that is wrong, anything that is hidden, almost becomes attractive and appealing. But not everything of the nature is good for you. So when we look at the most commonly committed crimes, these are the things that we are looking at. Drugs, guns. Young men, we need to find another way. See how everything that you got there? That is not the way. We are losing too many of our young men in prison, the symmetry, hospital. What, what was the sound? The sound used to tell you what? Uh, hospital something or jail? Hospital, cemetery, or jail? No. I bring things to give away, and I give away, and I really, I really don't want to take them back with me. I ask for them for you, and I think that you should get these things. Why do men commit, commit these crimes? Why do you think men commit these? Oh, look at the hands, look. <laughs> look at the hands. Look, 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 look. <laughs> Daryl Jordan. So you're, you're basically saying peer pressure. Is that what you're saying? Peer pressure, I can remember you. Lester Vaughn. Using drugs and you get to your brain or fry your brain? Which one or both? Both. Yes, sir. <laughs> Self esteem or peer pressure. And a lot of us do things because. Our self-esteem is so low. And we, we, we don't believe in self. We don't know our own strength. So we believe that anything goes. And that is why you are um, rewarded for your answer. Because it is so true. How many of you in here will admit that you have low self-esteem? Let me see the ones who believe they have low self-esteem. One honest young man. Two, three. Sometimes I like the answer. Four, five, six. How many of you? Seven. How many of you say you have high self-esteem? That you really believe in yourself, that don't matter what nobody say at all about you, it cannot get you down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, the, all the ones with high self-esteem, put your hands back up. And, yeah, why don't you say you have high self-esteem? You have high self-esteem, nobody can say anything to get you down or to get you to commit crimes, or to do what you're not supposed to do. So somebody come and go, your mother. Yeah, tell me what your self-esteem now. <laughs> Is it still high? You ready to kill? You, you're not ready to kill? What about you? You're ready to kill either? Let me keep it real, guys. How many of you in here, somebody can go and stand your face, your mother, and you just stand cool and calm and collective? Look at the hands, fantastic. Now, if your mother, let's go with you, I heard your voice already. If your mother got a phone call saying, uh, Miss Whoever, or Mrs. Whoever, meet your son at the hospital. He was involved in a fight and he was injured. When she gets there, and you're able to, you know, to talk with her. You say, but mommy, somebody tell me about you. 
and I get vexed, and I get in the foot, and I come second. <laughs> However, on the other hand, you go home, and you say to mom, mom's today at school, somebody tell me about my mother, and I just walk away, I didn't pay her any money because they don't know anything about you. Of the two, which one do you think will make your mother proud, prouder of you? The one that walked. So then if we know that, why then is it difficult to walk away from situations? Because you don't want to look soft. You want ranks. You want stripes. But you know something, from those stripes, you just get other stripes. The stripes is called bars. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. And I agree, I agree with you. How do you get angry? No, 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 no. I asked the question for a reason. If there's one thing that I want you guys to remember out of this whole thing, if you believe that Sean Craig get here and talk a lot, mm, out of this whole thing, I want you to remember one thing. Anger is an emotion. And because it is an emotion, nobody at all can make you angry. You control the emotion, which means you make the decision whether you are going to get angry or not. Because it's an emotion. So it means that you need to get in control of your emotions. You know that anytime you get in a fight, you never go in a fight to lose. How many of you go in a fight believing that you can get beat? Yeah, Man, don't take it on quite up. It was already there. <laughs> <laughs> and the, trust me when I say to you, the men are going to laugh at you. You ever got in a fight? Yeah. So you went all? Yeah. You're the bad man. <laughs> so because you went all, how many fights you get in there is a regular thing for you? Is a regular thing for you? Or you at least you are being honest. And you went all your fights? All of them? Hmm. You know what? It's still in working? You know that not even a hard see like John Cena is winning all the fights. Then he's got wash off sometimes too, right? Pardon me? That's TV. That's fake. Outside of it all though, the point I'm trying to get over to you is that prison is not fake. And prison in TV, prison is very real. And the way to get there is also very real. Because as you walk and you live within your schools, let, let's get right back to the, the meat of the matter. You have, you see this line here, for those of you who can see it? This is outside of prison. Or this is outside of the government industrial school for boys. This is on the inside. Those of you who like a lot of fighting and other deviant behaviors and so on, this is how you are. One foot in and one foot out. It is easier for the foot that is out to join the one that is in than the other way around. Make a choice because it is real. This working out, sir? Thank you. Ah, thank you, Mr. Graves. Why do men commit these crimes? Somebody said peer pressure. Who said peer pressure? Oh, yeah, you got a word already. There you go. Substance abuse. Failure at school. Failure at school school. You go in school and you don't want to go in the people English class because you don't like the English teacher. I do the English teacher stand on the exam room doing an exam for you. And if, instead of concentrating on the English, you are looking at the teacher. Oh, and again, he class because I don't like he. News flash. That English teacher already got that CXC. I'm Probably a lot more. When you come out of school and you're going for a job, don't fool yourselves. Even to get a job, packing shelves in a supermarket, you need to have some kind of knowledge because as a customer, I may come and ask you, um, excuse me, sir, I'm where can I find the salt? And you're looking all around, the salt right in front of you. <laughs> but because you cannot spell S-A-L-T, you can't tell me where to find the salt. 
And then you know what the excuse is? Oh, oh um, the grains, I, I thought it was sugar. You need an education, gentlemen. You need an education. My mother always used to say to me, no woman ain't one idiot. In this, in this day and age, but we ain't going to debate that. Yes, sir, we're not going to debate that. This, this smaller thing in your hand, right? Send it to Dal Jordan. Yeah, yeah, you can give him a clap too. Come on, give the man a clap. The man's speaking the truth. And I agree. It is something that I, I preach to young people every single day. You might have the education and you might have the skill. If you don't have the discipline to go along with it, if you don't have the manners to go along with it, you ain't getting away. Forgive me, I hope nobody don't pelt at me when I get outside. But look at Tino Bess and look at where he is today. Mr. Bain, one of the best spin bowlers in the entire Caribbean and probably outside. But struggle to get in a team because yeah, he has the skill but he lacks the discipline. And when you lack the discipline, you head into her majesty's uh, whatever that in the last word is. Lack of skills, lower family income, and this is real. You must learn to be contented. You must learn to accept what is yours is yours and hold on to it and not grudge anybody else. A lot of our young people get involved in bullying and things like that because they are jealous of what pe things that people own. So you're going to affect, and hopefully this fact finishing before 6 p.m. <laughs> Actually, I used to care, Phil. <laughs> and because the guy next door dress harder than you. You're jealous. You may not beat him yourself, but you might sell it the boys to take his shoes. And because of that, and be because you're not appreciative of what is yours, and want somebody else's. You find yourself in prison. You're getting things, well, not necessarily free, because the things that you get in prison, I pay for. But you're getting things that Apparently, it's free for you. You get the message they're trying to get over to you, sir? You get the message they're trying to get over? What am I saying to you? Don't hurry your head with the hand. I want no more. You're on the ball. Family problems. Early involvement in, in, in problems, problem behaviors. Going to the people's school in first form, and you want to run things. You want to be with the in thing. The, you want to be with the crew. <coughs> Stand up on the block. The men on the block smoking. You ain't smoking, but when the police vehicle come around, all you can carry it. Because you are there. And don't matter how much you bring down God. You are there. So. Repeat that. Bad association spoil. Use for her. Oh, God. So y'all uh, bring out your best. Y'all went around the school and decided I can get a group of intelligent people to kind of make sure Ankara look bad, right? And to show me up. I don't mind at all. You're sorry, son. You're working hard. Don't worry. Something might be coming your way. Just keep it up. Men as victims of crime. I, I'm so sorry that I... I, I <laughs> you're never a victim. I hope you're not a perpetrator either. <laughs> there was a guy called Shark. You used to call him Shark. He was very, very, very good at swimming. Don't matter whatever you wanted done in the ocean, he could do. You want to bet how Shark died? He drowned. Message to you. He drowned. 
Sometimes it's what you feel that you've got to his ways carry you. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry that I, that, that I can't show you this, this, these videos. Because, I mean, I did a lot of research. A lot of research on them. This one. They had this thing started in the United States, this, this, this sports, this fun thing, where a group of guys would get together, and they will just walk up to any stranger on the streets and cuff them in the face and knock them out. Pardon me? Yes. And it was fun for them. They didn't have to know you. They'll just walk up to you, blam, knock out. Laugh, go on the way. This part, the particular young man in the clip that I wanted to show you, he attempted, and uh, you know what happened? He got shot. <laughs> so, uh, the man that shot him got a cuff, and he got a burning. And then behind it, he went to prison. The moral of that story, whenever there's an action, there is a reaction. And whatever you do almost dictates what will follow you. It was fun for him. He never expected that he would have been the one to hit the wrong man. <laughs> whatever you do, there is a reaction to your action each and every time. Now, did you know that, that men were more likely than women to be victims of the most serious forms of physical crime? Although, don't fool yourself, girls getting real vicious nowadays, huh? Let us not fool ourselves, girls getting real vicious. You got a question for me? I hope I got an answer for you. Mm -hmm. No, real thing. Let me keep this real. Why would you want to put me in that spot at this hour time of the day? Hmm? But so, uh, so you're saying that a woman can't beat you in your house? Is that what you're saying, sir? I'm trying to understand what you're saying. And that is the way I want you to always feel. <laughs> Let me put it this way to you, huh? There were a number of police officers on duty one night, and they were sitting in the police station. And this very big, strapped guy came in, crying. He wanted his girlfriend ar arrested. He woman beating him bad. And the police officer said, oh, no, 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 no. And then the woman comes in, play a short thing, so. And the police started to laugh at him. It's not the size, bro. It has nothing to do with the size. I agree and I admire the first thing you said. Don't hit me because I'm going to hit you. We have to find common ground a way to live with each other. All right? You, you agree with that? If you agree with that, give me a clap. Not one of you. I uh, can clap too. I'm a free now. <laughs> men were more, more likely to be robbed than women. You know that? You know men get taken more than women? So that it means then that, uh, and when they get taken, they're being taken by who? Women? Men. Men. Young gentlemen, I'm not going to keep you long because, as I say to you, my favorite subject at school was lunch. And I think I'm in a different here today. <laughs> so what I want... <laughs> men laughing bad, right? <laughs> men laughing. At least he's thinking, isn't he? Now, what can we do? 
As men, we need to educate ourselves. Education is important. The mighty sparrow, uh, some of you probably will not have heard of him. He says, education is the foundation. And old man once said to me, Sonny boy, it is one thing to be black and poor. It's another thing to be black, uneducated, and poor. Education is our way out. We need to teach our children things like conflict resolution, and this is for the adults now. It cannot just be a pastime thing in the schools. It needs to become a part of, of the school system. Conflict resolution, anger management. Our young people getting angry at the slightest thing, but then again, as adults, we're doing the same thing too. Just cross some person on the road. Uh, I ain't doing it purposely. You might misjudge the distance in between. The names you just get called. <laughs> they will carry you from A right down to Z in a few seconds. <laughs> we need mentoring programs. Positive males need to take younger males under their arms and Teach them the right way. Teach them about relationships, as we just said, uh, with the gentleman in the back. Teach them about living and loving life and respecting the value of life, the value of living. Join a club. How many of you in here in, um, belong to a club? Don't lie. Let me see the hands. How many of you, any kind, any club? Sports club, community club, youth group, church club. How many of you here belong to a club? Now, how many of you belong to a disciplined club? My man said, wait, hold on, hold on. And he's thinking. Join a positive club. I don't think that we have enough of them going around. Nowadays, we need you young men to join clubs and to contribute positively to your society. You are not too young to contribute positively to your society. You need to volunteer your services at times. You are a very intelligent young man. You are not too young to take a six or seven year old who is having, what's, what's your favorite subject? Well, not your favorite because you might not be that good at your favorite subject. Your subject you are good at. Chemistry. What is your what what is your strongest subject, sir? Electronics. <laughs> so you don't got to be break too. And you don't think electronics is a is a brand ambassador? Why no one with electronics? Whatever subject you put your mind to. One is better or harder than the other. It is commitment to what you want to do that makes the difference. Sorry, sir. Increase your academic or your vocational interests. Not all of us got our English and Spanish and math and French. <laughs> Don't worry, me too. I, I had a say when I was at school that I would like to find a man who invent maths. I would dig him up, kill him, and bury him again. Okay? But that was just my thing. I, I ain't a criminal here. Don't hold that against me. If you are a good cricketer or a drummer, don't show me your skills now, though. If you are a good cricketer, don't let anybody tell you that you will make a better footballer. Go after your dreams and, and put all into it. We need you young men to be, to be out in the world the next five, six, seven years being productive citizens of Barbados, of the Caribbean. We don't want you as another statistic sitting down in somebody's jail cell and counting the days as they go by. <laughs> you can? <laughs> you got too much time to study mass while you're in there, right? No, I wanted, what else can you do? I wanted to play a song for you, but that is one of the things that I can't play for you. But I always follow the spirit, and the spirit led me 
to walk with the lyrics. So I'm going to recite the lyrics to you. I ain't going to sing them. Because trust me, you all ain't got enough money to pay me to sing for you. All right? And I have to be booked in advance. I just can't come here and say, oh, sing a little something. No, it don't work so. This song was done by a Trinidadian guy called Gypsy. The song says, there was a little black boy. A black boy was he. The boy went to school and he come out dancey. He never learned how to read. He never learned about maths. He never learned how to write. He never studied about that. All he studied was, was his sneakers, his sneakers and clothes. He learned how to dress and he learned how to pose. He can't get no work, no, he can't get a job. He decided to kill and he decided to rob. But little black boy couldn't last long at all. The police put a bullet in his, in his dunksy head skull. It says, little black boy go to school and learn. Little black boy show some concern. Little black boy education is the key to get you off the streets and out poverty. There was a little black boy, a rude boy was he. All the boy ambition was to conduct a maxi. With a ring in his nose and a gold teeth in his mouth. He feel very proud, I heard that, when they call him a stout. So a pro was the boy that the boy never learned. He could have worked hard and buy a maxi of his own. So he hustled for a dollar, he hustled for a smoke. He hustled so that he could buy a little coke. Now he hook on the coke and off the maxi and one more little black vagrant in the country. And he went through the chorus again, little black boy blind, go back through the chorus with you. He says, when you're black, you're just black. You can't help but be black. But because you're black, you don't stay in the back. Be black, be black, but be conscious. Be black, be black, but be conscious. Look in the front, see who's the doctor. Look in the back, see who's the lawyer. Look in the bank, see who's the banker. Look at the business, who's the owner. Look at the staff. See who is the worker. Look at the drugs. See who is the damn man. Look who is in out of them garbage cans. Look in the jail. See who you see, dude. A lot of little black boys. Just like you. I can leave it right there. Right there. A lot of little black boys just like you. Gentlemen, I hope that I was able in my own little way to impress something upon you today. That you will not only remember the little laughs that you had in between, but the seriousness of this topic. Men as perpetrators and victims of crime. We need each and every one of you to be positive males in this society. Let us start a new generation of young men in Barbados. Let us start it from today. And let us start it with Queen's College, right back down to Dayton Griffith. I know we can do it, and I hope you know. If you know you can do it, clap for yourself. There you go, sir. No. Nah. <laughs> there you go, sir. May God bless you and I oblige. Enjoy the rest of your uh, workshop. <laughs>